So, uh, so a couple of new things to show. First off, um, I want to talk about performance because that is one of the overarching mm -hmm. benefits of the iPhone 3GS. We've improved the hardware, we've done a lot of software work, so everything that you do on iPhone 3GS will be faster. Okay. Uh, launching applications, um, you know, going to complicated websites and downloading all that information is faster, viewing email attachments is faster. Everything that you do is going to be speedier and zippier and, and more responsive. Is that kind of an approximate sort of speed? I mean, we're talking like one and a half times. Two X. Okay, Say right. two X, okay. yeah. On average, two X faster. There's some things that will be faster than that, some things will be slower than that, but on average, you're going to feel about 2x of the speed improvement. Okay. That's pretty good. And it's funny because most people don't necessarily think that the original iPhone 3G felt slow. No. But if you have both in your hand, you start using this one, it's like, it's like having a faster car. It's like, oh, I can go faster now. That's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> so, um, so it is faster, which is nice. Um, but that speed and performance actually does enable other things. It allows us to do some, some really nice things on this device that you can't do on the other uh, devices. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, there are some specific new enhancements to hardware pieces. One of them is a new camera. So we actually yeah. have improved the camera on this device. It now takes um, three megapixel pictures. Um, but more importantly than just the megapixel count, we have an autofocus feature now. Mm -hmm. So we can actually go in and focus on whatever we want using this new tap to focus feature. So okay, we actually nice. implemented this really handy um, way to control the autofocus of the camera. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to move this around so that you can yeah, yeah. we have something actually somewhat interesting to take a picture of <laughs> instead of the floor or the tabletop. So um, you, the first thing you might have noticed is a blue square that popped up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, and that's the autofocus kind of in action. So as soon as I change and, and we were looking at something else, uh, that autofocus square comes in. I move it over here, you'll see that autofocus square come in. That's the autofocus just realizing that something in the frame has changed and I need to refocus on it. Now, if I want to override that, let's say I want to actually focus on something uh, over here in the foreground. I just tap the screen and the camera focuses on that object. Or if I tap over here, we're going to focus on that. Now, the other thing you might be noticing is the auto exposure. So uh, as I tap on various things, not only are we controlling the autofocus, but we're controlling the auto exposure as well. So the camera is realizing, oh, we're, you're trying to you know, get enough light to render out an image back here, which is a little bit darker. So it'll open the camera lens, mm -hmm. bring in more light. Um, it, it can illustrate that point uh, probably if I tap on the back of the room there. So that's pretty dark back there. So everything, is uh, so everything is, goes white, right? Mm -hmm. Because everything in the foreground is going to be a little bit blown out, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure, because you've told the camera, I want to make sure that we have enough light to you know, get an image of the TV in the back wall there. If I tap on something in the foreground, um, it's closer, there's more light here, so the whole image got darker because we don't want to blow out you know, what we're trying to capture in the foreground. Can you um, manually change the exposure beyond that? No. So, okay, no. so it's, it's just... all tied to whatever you're tapping on the screen as the area of interest that you want okay. to record. Um, another cool feature we have is a macro. So we can actually have, we have an auto macro, so if I have something up close, I can get within about 10 centimeters of the object and we can get uh, a really nice sharp image. 10 centimeters? Yeah, okay. 10 That's centimeters. Um, so if I take a picture of this, we're up nice and close, focuses on it. It's a pretty sharp image. Yeah, it's nice. It's pretty good. So that's the macro um, feature. And then uh, another big new feature we have is video. So uh, if you notice down in the bottom lower right, I have now a still camera icon and a video camera icon. And if I want to record video, I just scroll over to video. And now we've switched into video record mode. So uh, I'm recording up to 30 frames per second. Um, it's H.264 VGA resolution, so it's 640 by 480. Um, and I'm recording audio with that as well. So as soon as I want to record something, uh, I'll just tap to focus on something, hit record. So now we're recording uh, everybody in the room. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, hello. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, and is that mono recording? See you too. <laughs> is that mono recording? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's mono. Alright, so now we've recorded some video. Let me show you some of the uh, on device video capabilities. So I'll play back that video. So here's the video we just recorded. Let's see how we did when we flipped it around. I'm curious how that. Yeah, yeah we got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a um, couple of things I can do. I've yeah. got a timeline at the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. I can actually grab the playhead 
and move that around, you can see the video is scrubbing through in the background. Mm. Um, if I hold there, it'll actually zoom in on the individual frames, so that'll allow me to get a little bit finer grain control. And I can trim the video too, so if I grab the endpoint, I can drag the endpoint around if I wanted to trim this to a particular clip. So let's say I recorded three minutes of video, but I really only wanted 20 seconds or so mm -hmm. to send to a friend. Yep. I can actually edit the video right on the device. So I pick the, uh, adjust the start point and the end point, I hit trim, we trim the video, and we're all done. And then if I want to share it, I can tap the, uh, the button right there, it's the kind of share feature, and now I can email it, I can MMS it, I can upload it to my mobile me gallery, I can also send it directly to YouTube. There's some really handy share features built right in. So the idea here is that you know you have now a, uh, a really great still camera and a really great high quality video camera in your pocket at all times. You can capture all those uh, you know all those moments and you can share them very quickly. You know, most point and shoot pocket type cameras can record great pictures, they can record video, but you don't have any way to upload them mm. right away. So wherever I am, I'm generally connected to some network, cell network or Wi-Fi network, and I can post those things to Facebook or you know Twitter or whatever. Um, and uh, we're going to see, I think, a lot of people uploading a lot of video content from iPhone 3GS. Okay. Um, is it the same uh, glass and chipsets and everything for the camera? As the previous generation? Yeah. No, no, it's a whole new camera. Okay. It's right. a whole new camera. It's, the autofocus part is actually mechanical. So right. the camera in the previous generation was a fixed focus camera. Mm -hmm. It basically had a lens that could do about a meter away to, to infinity. infinity. Yeah, whereas this thing we can go, we can we have control of it and we can do from 10 centimeters all the way out to infinity. Okay. Yeah. And can you do with the, um, when you're taking video, can you touch to focus? Once you start, rec so you can do it up until you start recording. So you okay, basically minutes. lock in the, the focus and then you hit, when you hit record, it keeps that focus. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to continue to be strobing as you're moving around. You're going to get this kind of weird, like, oh, it's out of focus, in focus, out of focus, in focus. So. Okay. Yep. So that's video. Um, let me show you the compass now. So we do have a digital compass built in uh, to iPhone 3GS. There's a compass app that goes along with it. That's what it looks like. So if I you know, move good. it around, the dial moves around. I can uh, tell it that I want to uh, weight it to magnetic north or view true, true north, north, right? Something that a physical mag uh, you know, magnetic compass can't do. Um, but we in software can adjust for that. We know the location of the phone. We know what the map looks like around the globe for how uh, magnetic north moves, and so we can correct for that. So that's the compass. Um, the compass is probably most useful uh, when it's kind of incorporated with our maps application. Mm -hmm. um, that's where most people want to know where they're facing is in relationship to their surroundings. So if I tap this button here, it'll launch the maps application. Of course, I can just map, launch maps from the home screen as well. And in the maps application, if you tap this button here, it locates you. So it finds your location based on whatever information it can, either GPS, Wi-Fi, or cell tower triangulation. Um, once I've found my location here, if I tap it again, it launches the compass view mode. So now you can see the kind of um, beacon sticking out from the position, and that beacon shows us which way we're facing. Okay. Um, the width of the beacon is relative to the accuracy of uh, the compass heading. So now, if I rotate the phone, well, I need to be more down like this, right? But yeah. if I'm moving around, um, so if I pop out of the tube, I'm on a corner somewhere, and I need to figure out which way I'm facing, I can launch into compass view, and I know exactly what direction to go. So, yep. Pretty handy. You'll we'll be using that tonight, then. I, we've been using it all the time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Comes in very handy. And are there any apps apart from the maps at the moment that have really taken the idea of the compass and put it into? Uh, probably not, because uh, this device just launched today, so nobody really has it. Sure. Um, so <laughs> probably not a single developer out there um, has uh, been able to actually implement anything yet. Now, they've probably thought about it in the last few hours, and maybe in the next couple of days or something, we'll see something. Who knows? But there is an API, so developers can access the compass if they want to write applications okay. to it. Um, another uh, big new feature with iPhone 3GS is voice control. So we've created an application that will uh, listen to your, your voice, take input, and actually control things like call, making you know, phone calls, dialing phone numbers, and also using the iPod as well. So the way this works is you press and hold the home button, launches voice control. You heard that beep, mm -hmm. so that tells you that uh, the microphone is listening. <clears throat> As I'm speaking, you can see the waveforms going, 
And then also notice on the UI, the words that you say are floating by. So that's a visual prompt. So I can say things like play more music, like this, dial, pause music, call, previous track, uh, phone, play playlist. So, yeah. um, so that's uh, one way to launch the application. The other way is to use the uh, button on the headphones. So we ship uh, the uh, stereo earbuds with microphone and remote uh, with iPhone 3GS. So there's a button on here that you press and hold just like you would press and hold the home button to okay. launch voice control. So I'll show you how this works with in the phone application. Call on a Larson. Anna Larson, home, mobile, or work. Mobile. Calling Anna Larson, mobile. So there, place the phone call. Nice. <clears throat> so the way this works, uh, the voice control app knows all of the contacts in your address book. So when you speak, it's cross-referencing that to all the names in your address book. In this case, it found Anna Larson, but it knew that there were multiple numbers for it, for her, and so it responded back, which one did you mean? So it knows how to ask for more information. Do you need to train it at all to your voice? Nope. It just works. And universal across all accents and everything? Uh, it, I mean, so accents can throw it off, yes. but we've certainly tried to mess it up with a, a French accent or, or whatnot, and it works yeah. pretty well. But, I mean, it's not perfect, right? If you gave it a really funky accent, it would probably <laughs> throw it off. Okay. <clears throat> um, but you can change multiple languages as well. So uh, we have support for around 20 or so languages, French, German, Italian, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, etc. And two types of English. Yes. Two types? Because yeah. there's two types of English spoken around the world. We're making him do the British. Well, yeah, naturally. Of course. <laughs> it's doing very well. Being in England. <laughs> yeah, we figured it was appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to dial a number, you would just say dial and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it would dial that number. So uh, we, you know, that's basically uh, for the kind of the hands free dialing requirements that uh, um, a lot of countries have. I mean, Driving California, yeah, yeah. We have that as well. So. Um, the fact that you could mount this in your, you know, some dashboard thing and just hit a one button and then make a phone call, or okay. using your headphones, you just press the, the center button, make a phone call. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's really where uh, it's most useful. It's most fun to use in the iPod. So we actually uh, enabled it with the iPod. So and I think this makes a lot of sense because most people are walking down the street, they've got their headphones in, they're listening mm -hmm. to music, and you want to control your iPod without taking it out of your pocket and turning it on and going into the iPod feature. So there's a certain syntax that works with iPod. You give it a command like play, then you say um, album and an album name, or you say play artist and an artist name, or you say play playlist and a playlist name, and it'll do that. So we'll uh, go in here and launch something. Play playlist workout mix. Playing playlist workout mix. So now we're playing some music. Um, I'll just launch the iPod UI so you can see that. So we launched uh, iPod, we're playing some music. You can even ask it questions. What song is this? Now playing Shut Up and Let Me Go by the Ting Tings. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you're a fan of the Genius feature, which is something we've uh, uh, put into iTunes a couple of generations ago, uh, let's say you're walking down the street, you get to a song you like, you want to mix it up and make a dynamic playlist on the fly. I can actually do that with my voice now. Play more songs like this. Play Ingenious Playlist based on Shut Up and Let Me Go by the Ting Tings. All right, so now we've got a playlist that we've created um, based on that one song. Mm. We also have a new Shake to Shuffle feature in iPhone OS 3.0. So if I shake the phone, you know, skip to the next song. It's kind of cool. So that's, uh, that's voice control. Nice. Pretty cool. Very good. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Uh, I, I just know that you're going to walk down the street and see people talking into their phones now, which is going to be really funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's always been a bit weird when you see people with headsets. Yeah, you think, yeah. are they mad or are they... Yeah, are you talking to yourself? <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy, you okay? See, the one I was thinking of is when people are, if people are going to be using it for um, a sat-nav device. And instead of obviously have, actually having to play with it with your fingers, if someone develops something where you can just talk to it, you know, yeah, direct to point, home yeah. and that kind of thing, I think that's really mm -hmm. useful. Yeah, and that is a, a capability that we have enabled with uh, this version of... Uh, 
the iPhone OS is uh, turn by turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that's certainly possible. Um, just a couple other hardware specific things to mention. We do have support for Nike Plus iPod now. So if you're a runner, uh, you don't need to attach the. Uh, not a runner. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. I, I, you know, I, I like the idea of it, but. <laughs> So uh, for anybody that, uh, that likes to run, it's built in, so you don't have to uh, get the little transceiver part. Mm -hmm. um, we do have support for the faster uh, HSDPA cellular download speeds. So okay. um, for any carrier that supports it, it's built in, ready to go. Jump mm -hmm. on the network, you'll be fine. Uh, there is a new uh, non-stick kind of fingerprint resistant coating on the screen. Oh, is that the sort of oil resistance? Yep. Yeah, yeah. there's something about that. Yeah, yeah it's nice. pretty cool. It's, uh, we've basically put a, a micro thin layer uh, of a, a material called oleophobic mm. and um, it resists fingerprints and, and finger oils. So uh, it has a very non-stick kind of slippery uh, quality to it mm. and it just uh, it, it prevents the fingerprints from kind of building up. Over time, it of course will build up, um, and but if it does, you can just wipe the phone, you know, fairly quickly on clothes or a cloth or something like that. And because of the non-stick quality of the surface, it'll wipe it away really quickly. So it just keeps the screen cleaner, which is which is kind of nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, on top of all that, we have improved battery life too. Yeah, was I reading down at nine hours or something of? Of internet and yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. We'll, we'll send you the link to all of the data. Yeah, but, don't worry. But, uh, Something yeah, like that. It's, yes. I mean, <clears throat> from using it, which I assume you do, I mean, do you get more than, do you get about a day out of it? Yeah, the whole goal is to get a day. Right. right? Um, so, yeah, generally what people do is they, they dock it at night, so they charge it up overnight, so it's full mm -hmm. charge in the morning, you pick it up, you go through your entire day, and hopefully you can make it to the end of the day without, uh, mm -hmm. without having to recharge it. Depends on your usage, depends on what you're doing. There's certain activities that use more battery than, than you know, others. So. Like GPS, is that one of the main, or um, video or something? Yeah, I mean, video uses a fair amount. Um, anytime you're, you're, you're accessing the network, that mm -hmm. tends to use a lot. Okay. Yeah. And then having the backlight on, too. I mean, anytime the screen is doing stuff. Yeah. Right? That, uh, there's basically a big light there, so that okay. uses it. Yeah, you got to power that. So, um, so yeah, so those are kind of the main hardware features. Um, let's talk quickly about kind of the new uh, iPhone OS 3.0 features. There's yeah, okay. over a hundred or so new features there. I'll just <laughs> highlight, you know, 99 of them or so. Um, <clears throat> how much video do you got? Uh, I've already got 17 minutes. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. just. Don't weigh yourself out. I've already, got, I've already got plenty. It's fine, but I mean, I'm curious as well. Yeah. So just what you can handle doing at a leisurely pace. <laughs> so I'll just highlight a couple. Um, MMS is something that people have been asking for, and mm. we have a great implementation of MMS now. Okay. So you can not only send images in with along with your text messages, but you can send video clips on iPhone 3GS. You can send audio clips as well. Uh, you can send contact information. So if you want to. You know, send somebody your, your info as an MMS, you can send a V card, um, and you can also um, send GPS coordinates. So if you were at a pub, you wanted to tell all your bud buddies that you're at, a at this particular place, you just find it in the maps and you send it as an MMS, and then they open it up on their iPhone, they can find directions, so it's pretty cool, yes, pretty yes. cool implementation. Um, so that's MMS, uh, just quickly, you can see what some of these messages look like. So. That's an image, shows it right in line with your text message. Mm -hmm. That's uh, location information, so if I tap on that, we can go straight to maps and you can see, see where that location is. Um, video, that's a video, there's a little play button there, so if I tap that play button, it'll play the video. Um, really easy to, to, um, to look at uh, multimedia inside of your messages. If I want to uh, insert a picture or a video, I just tap on that. This is a new icon um, in the new UI. So I can either, at this point, take a new photo or a video recording, or I can choose an existing one. I can just go into my library and pick something, and it'll drop it right into, um, you know, drop it right into uh, to that MMS message. So if I wanted to take a picture, take that picture, I'll take that picture. Oh, yeah, we'll tell it to use it, <clears throat> and it'll drop it right into that MMS message, and then I can go in and I can. You know, type out something and yeah. set out an MMS. So, pretty straightforward there. Um, cut, copy, and paste is a great feature as well. Yes, please, I'd like to see that. <laughs> so cut, copy, and paste works really, really well. Um, it is a uh, super user-friendly feature, and it definitely takes advantage of the multi-touch screen that we have and all of the kind of cool finger, finger gestures that we have in iPhone. 
So there's a couple of ways to show this off. I'll just use an email to show it off. So I've got uh, an email that I'm composing, let's say, and uh, I'm replying to this email. Let's say there's some information I want to copy out of this. I can just double tap a word, brings up the cut, copy, and paste bubble, and these little drag points allow me to extend the area that I'm highlighting uh, for copying. So I just pick up that address, hit copy, let's say I go up to the top of the email, and uh, I just double tap here, hit paste, and I copy and paste it. Now let's go to uh, like a web page. So here's a web page, for example, that um, this is the New York Times. So it'll download the New York Times. Um, this is a document, obviously, that I can't edit, right? This is just something, a static uh, image that, or page that I, I can view. Um, so let's say I want to grab some copy out of this uh, website. So instead of double tapping, because double tapping on a web page zooms in, I tap and hold, brings up the magnifying glass, which it has always done, but this time when I let go, it brings up a copy bubble. So at this point, I can drag that, uh, that same kind of um, uh, drag control bar, and I can copy this. Copy here, I can hit copy. I'll go back to the email that I was composing. Double tap there, hit paste, and I've just inserted that uh, you know, paragraph from the New York Times into my email. I also notice that it preserved the uh, fonts, so it kept the fonts, oh, the yeah. font colors, and all that. That's because our email application is an HTML-based email application, so it knows all the tags and everything from the website and just preserved all that. So, so it preserved all the hyperlinks and everything as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, if I uh, decide I didn't want to do that paste, I can shake the phone. It brings in this uh, undo option. I can tap undo, and uh, it goes away. Or if I want to redo it, shake the phone, redo paste. There it is. Does that stay, is that for anything on the clipboard? Mm -hmm. So it will stay there until the until next something time. else. Yeah, just okay. put there. So that's cut, copy, and paste. Uh, let me show you Spotlight Search. That's another uh, very useful one. So we have search built into a number of applications. You can search inside your iPod or your calendar or your notes. And inside of email is probably where I think it's the most useful. So let me just cancel that email. Let's go back to our inbox. So at the top of your inbox, you now have a search field. You can type in any keyword there, and it'll search through the, uh, all the emails on your device. So it'll search the to field, the from field, and the subject line. Um, on top of that, you can actually search back on the server as well. So the, the, the idea here is that generally um, you, know, we, you keep maybe 50, 100 or so emails on your device, but maybe you have an email that you know somebody sent you a long time ago, two months ago, or whatever, that you need to get to. So I can type in a keyword here, I can hit search, and I'll be prompted at the bottom to continue that search on the server if my email service provider allows it, which most IMAP servers do. And then I can search back on the server for that too. So really, really useful feature. So that's uh, search within an application. We also have uh, now Spotlight Search. So there's one place that you can go to search across the entire iPhone. So I've got you know, a 32 gig iPhone here, lots of information, lots of data. If I go to the Spotlight Search by just flicking across the screen from the home screen, and I can type in keyword here, and immediately you can start seeing search results pop up. And so this is searching across all of those key applications, so contacts, uh, iPod, you know, whatever else is in here, based on that keyword. I can tap on any of those things and it'll go right there. It also searches across your third-party application titles as well. Okay. So uh, it's a quick way to actually launch an application, right? You might have 10 pages worth of third-party apps installed. Rather than flicking over to get to that 10th page, I could just do one flick to Spotlight, type in a couple of letters, find it, tap it and launch it. So it'll be a quick shortcut for, uh, for that. So that's Spotlight Search. Um, these are kind of the main things that I think uh, a lot of people will be using on the new iPhone OS 3.0. And then uh, a couple other things to mention on uh, the mobile me stuff. 